There's this old adage, gentlemen don't sail to weather. Sailors who sail around the world often plan their voyages to avoid long stretches sailing upwind. And it's true that beating towards the wind is a loud and bumpy and sharply angled endeavor. The boat heels over, the bow smashes into waves, the wind whips past. And although I wouldn't want to do it for days at a time, in short bursts, it can be absolutely exhilarating. Put your sails up! Join us as we beat against the wind all the way to Amsterdam. I'm Maya, and this is Aladino. Our journey began a few years ago, when this boat fell off a crane. After four years of rebuilding her, we named her Magic Carpet and we set sail to go around the world as slowly as possible. This season, we're sailing in the Netherlands. Join us as we explore the history and strange natural beauty of this seafaring nation. From the canals of Amsterdam to the pastoral islands of the Wattensee, welcome to Magic Carpet in the Netherlands. New episode every Friday. In the last episode, we left Kempen and started our journey towards Amsterdam. We didn't make it very far. The wind had been mostly non-existent. But today, we hoped to finally make it to the city. There was a lot more wind forecast. The only downside was that it was coming right on our nose. It would be a long day of upwind sailing, zigzagging back and forth across the marker mirror. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so what's our plan, Amore? How about sailing off anchor? Oh, wow. Yeah. There's a lot of wind. And uh, it's not from the ideal direction, but still, right now we feel like it. So we sail off and we can uh, drop the sails and uh, motor after because we have one lock um, here for a dike and we cannot sail there. And also it is narrowing down and the wind is coming out of the narrow channel. But we have a little bit to go and it's exciting to sail off anchor. And uh, what better place to do it than here. So what's the plan? Uh, so the plan is... I'm cold, just a second. Oh. Well, I would put the main up always. Yes. Just like when you anchor under sail, you can always leave it up but open, so what we do now is um, the same things but in reverse, so I would pull the main up first. After that, somebody pulls up the anchor and just when we are about to be free, we can direct the main to either one side or the other. Now, we're in the wind, we're perfectly in the wind now, so preferably we want to sail off this side, right? Mm -hmm. So we can provoke that a bit with the main push us into that direction and then also what I do uh, maybe I pull out the Genoa and as soon as I pull out the Genoa it will push us sideways and then we try to sail off this side. Cool. Yeah? Sounds good. All right. One reef in the main and whoa! Fill the main, fill the main, holy moly! There's a gust. One reef in the main, one reef in the Genoa. But it's gusty today! Yeah, totally. There's another one. So yeah, um, 
there is really lots of room here and ideal conditions to uh, try this but we were not um, how should I say it? We weren't as smooth as we hoped to be. Yeah, we weren't as smooth as we hoped to be. Um, I forgot about the topping lift, so I didn't have full control over the main while Maya was on the anchor. I tried to bring the boat over, but since the boom was still held up a bit, the main couldn't be flat enough to actually get us through the wind. Uh, so yeah, that was one thing, but I just took a little bit of Genoa out and then you have enough control and we went towards land and then I, when I had enough speed I could tack. And I undid the topping lift once I was done with the anchor because that's on exactly. the mast, so Aladino couldn't control it. From but the besides that everything went uh, fine. Yeah. The anchor is a bit hard to get up at the very end, but that's also not something uh, you can be better or worse at. That's just how it is for now. Yeah, yeah very nice. Conditions were ideal. The wind was coming from over the dike, which meant that there was almost no room for waves to build up. Flat water and strong wind, every sailor's favorite combination. There is absolutely a feeling of exhilaration that comes with some good upwind sailing. It feels fast. The boat is heeled over and the wind feels a lot faster than it really is. If you've sailed before, perhaps you know the feeling of transitioning from an upwind course to a downwind course. The downwind course always feels a lot slower, even though it isn't. As soon as you turn off the wind, everything is quieter and the boat feels less strained. That's why sailors try to avoid really long upwind passages. It gets tiring. Plus, of course, sailing upwind often means having to tack several times to arrive to your destination, which just adds a lot more distance to the overall journey. But for a relatively short passage and after a long break from sailing, we didn't mind the upwind journey. In fact, we kind of liked it. We rolled the sails in as we approached the lock. First lock in the Netherlands, with the mast up. Yeah. Uh, it is much more relaxed, I would say. But uh, all the boats, they rush straight in. I know. And then everybody gets a spot and everything uh, resolves last minute. Yeah. But it looks chaotic in the beginning. And then we have a bridge, but it's a lifting bridge. Yeah. Yeah, how funny. We barely moved. But I guess this one's more for flood protection than elevation gain, really. Yeah. Oh wow, it's done. Now the bridge is opening. And the motorboat is already impatient. He says, I don't need no bridge lifted. You guys wait. <laughs> I go. As we exited the lock, we saw this rather unique ship at the dock. It's a replica of the Batavia, a Dutch ship built in 1628 that was the stage to what was apparently one of the worst horror stories in maritime history. I'll let you do the googling if you're interested. It gets a bit gruesome. We were now entering the Markermeer, where we'd set an upwind course to Amsterdam. Yummy! The yummy soup called Markermeer! <laughs> Really bouncy here, actually. The wind is actually coming pretty much directly from Amsterdam, which is obviously not great for us. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna try tacking back and forth upwind, see how far we get. Yeah, just now there's a little channel we're motoring through. Yeah. And then main is up. And sailing again. Now we were really moving. The waves had more room to build up here, so the water was choppy and confused. We charged along under reefed sails.
It's absolutely just incredible what a difference sails make. As we motored out of the lock and around the sort of channel that now leads into the marker mirror where we are right now, it was, we were met with this really awful, really nasty, short, uh, inconsistent chop. And the boat was just woo as we motored out of the channel. How was the boat? <laughs> And, and as soon as we put the sails up, it just evens right out. The boat cuts through the waves instead of being rolled by them. It makes a giant, giant difference. And after coming down the Rhine River, being rolled around so much by all those cargo ships going by, it feels great to have the stabilization of sails once again. So moral of the story, put your sails up. Wow, I didn't know your voice could go that high. Everybody put your sails up. <laughs> One, one complaint, one negative little side note from me, who is all about snorkeling, free diving and spearfishing. It has not crossed my mind for one second to go spearfishing in this green soup. <laughs> so I hope, I hope that gets better and that there is a place in the north, maybe in the Baltic, where I can still pursue these new to me hobbies. But here? Nah. It's and it's four meters! As soon as you dive It's four down, meters <laughs> deep! We're like sailing out and it's 4.4. Yeah, here, as soon as you dive down with your spear gun extended and your long fins behind you, you will have already smacked the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> we kept tacking back and forth, drawing slowly closer to Amsterdam. We're five hours in, into our sailing journey. Of course, tacking takes a longer time, if not even uh, twice the time, when the destination is exactly where the wind comes from. But it's wonderful, I'll show you around. Uh, the waves has smoothed down a little bit, so it, the boat's just like going on tracks. So we're still going for a while and then we will tack and Amsterdam is pretty much in that direction. How are you enjoying this so far? Oh, very much. Hmm. Yay, thank you. Rosina Bowler with peanut butter. Everything is working great. Mm -hmm. Autopilot chopped up and working. Uh, I'll have to check the solar panel. That's the only... The solar panel is on and working, but not charging the batteries, so... I was reading a little bit about the Victron battery life setting. I think that might have something to do with it. I figure it I mean, in a place like this, just going out for a day sail, going out for a joyride seems like the most wonderful thing to do. It's just absolutely lovely. You know, in the Mediterranean, we heard a lot of people say that there's either too much wind or there's not enough wind. 
and I think we did find that to be the case. It was either, you know, you're being thrown around in all this swell and it's not, you know, pleasure cruising or you've got the engine on. And this is just ideal. And I mean, we haven't been here long enough to know how often it's like this, but I get the sense that since this is a more enclosed area and there's always wind here, that this isn't too uncommon. So pretty great. I understand why the Dutch are a nation of sailors. This is pretty incredible. Yeah. Besides having lost track of what's happening and a bit roasted by the sun. <laughs> it just moves. Yeah. Everything just works. Wow, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Holy moly, it has been quite a long day um, and we're still not there yet. We've just been tacking back and forth as close to the wind as possible. In terms of distance, it's actually not far. How far have we gone today? Like oh, I... 20 nautical miles? Yeah, easy. But in terms of tacking, we'll have to look at our route because we have covered so much more ground than that. So we've been heeled over all day, but it's actually been really fun to feel the motion of a sailboat underway again. And it got calmer. It got way calmer, the, the sea. Because before yeah. there was a, a, quite a, a fair amount of chop. Now it's pretty still. Anyway, so hopefully we'll get to Amsterdam before dark. I mean, it is almost starting to get questionable. There's a gust. Want to release the main? It's okay. Yeah, it is starting to get questionable. I don't know, maybe we'll try and find a spot sort of outside because there is actually a lock in order to get into Amsterdam. So time to continue on. I mean, <laughs> it's funny to think that we could always throw the anchor down in the middle of the lake. I don't think we will do that. But uh, how deep is it still? Yeah, three, three and a half, and a half. It's Well, it like is seven now, but the good thing is that we still seven have... Seven o'clock, not yeah, seven Yes, seven o'clock. Yeah. And the good thing is we still have two and a half hours of uh, sun up yeah. on the horizon and then it's full moon so yeah if we want to make it i'm sure we'll make it as long as the lock doesn't close i don't know about that nah. yeah all right that's our update and dini is happy um i feel a bit sunbaked <laughs> yeah as you as you can see again i'm always wearing a hoodie but i think uh, now beginning of August it's definitely the hottest days in Holland as well and the sun the, can burn you yeah <laughs> so I did feel you like wear we... sunscreen no you're so bad at that I have a hat. no uh, you're so bad at that yes I wore three layers of sunscreen <laughs> at least then you're still red <laughs> I know Although we were tired from a long day, I could still appreciate the beauty of the golden hour light. That hour or two before sunset are always my favorite of the day, when the light is rich and saturated and gentle. the last tack into Amsterdam but we've kind of been saying that all day so <laughs> <laughs> We did manage to make it just before dark. With the sun directly in our eyes, we lowered the sails and motored under another bridge, through a lock, and into Amsterdam. Woohoo! We made it through the lock! We are in Amsterdam. We're both a bit sunbaked. Uh, but that was, we didn't film it, I'm sorry, but that was probably the easiest locking experience of our entire trip. The water barely moved and everything was set up perfectly for pleasure boats. Holland has boating pretty much figured out, I, I would say. So yes, now it's just a matter of heading to the harbor and finding a spot. 
And then I think we're gonna crash. I don't know if much exploring will happen tonight. Thank you so much to all of you for watching. And an extra big thank you to our patrons for making this episode and all others possible. And an extra big thank you to these folks who really go the extra mile to make sure that Magic Carpet keeps being published every week. We'll see you all next Friday. Bye.